Hey everyone, welcome to Judging for the Win. I'm Dave, and this is my daily ruling. Today's question comes to us from a viewer. Thanks to Sid for this one. Amy plays a catalog while she controls thought reflection. What happens? All right, so we're going to perform all of the instructions on catalog in the exact order that they're written down. So the first thing that Amy's going to be instructed to do is draw two cards. And the first interesting point that comes up is whether or not thought reflection will apply to this event at all and how it will apply. So if we take a look at exactly what thought reflection says, it says if you would draw a card. Now we're actually being instructed to draw two cards, which is actually a little bit different than drawing a card. You might think that this is kind of a nitpicky distinction to make, but it turns out that replacement effects, like a lot of other stuff in Magic, are extremely literal. They do exactly what they say they do, and they don't do anything else. So if we've got an instruction to draw two cards and a replacement effect that looks if we draw one card, well, that might be an issue. Fortunately for us, we have this rule here, which indicates that if we have an instruction that tells us to draw multiple cards, then the way that you perform that instruction would be to draw one card that many times. This means that the instruction to draw two cards for Amy is actually going to be performed as drawing a card, then drawing another card. And that means that the thought reflection is able to see and replace both of the draw a card instructions just fine, the way that most people probably expected it to work. Amy will end up, therefore, drawing a total of four cards. Now, after that, Amy is going to discard. Now, remember what we said about replacement effects. They replace exactly the stuff that they say they do, and they don't do anything about any of the stuff that they don't do. So that means that the discard a card instruction, because the thought reflection makes absolutely no mention at all about this, is going to be performed entirely normally, and Amy will discard one card. Now, it is possible if there were, for example, some other kind of replacement effects going on, like maybe e -Ruths, that when Amy is instructed to discard a card, she might not have any cards at all in her hand. And if that's the case, then Amy just won't discard. It does say to discard a card, and that doesn't necessarily mean a card that we drew off of that catalog. So if Amy had some cards in her hand beforehand, then she still would have to discard. She only gets a free pass if she doesn't have any cards at all, and therefore it's not possible for her to discard a card. Okay, so that's some pretty cool value play. But, in my opinion, the best value play involving that thought reflection would be involving my boy Sinbad here. As you can see, Sinbad's ability lets you draw a card and then reveal it. But if it's not a land card, then you would have to discard. Let's see how that would work if you had a thought reflection out, though. As you can see, the first part is to draw a card. That's great because that's exactly what the thought reflection looks for, so we know the thought reflection will be able to apply to this and let you draw two cards. Now, we come to the next part of the instruction, and it's a little bit less obvious how this is going to play out. I mean, would we be revealing both of the cards that we drew? And that does sort of seem like a reasonable expectation to have. However, it turns out that's not exactly how this works. As you can see here, if you have a replacement effect that replaces a card draw with an instruction that tells you to draw a card and then perform some other action on it, then that means that because the card draw got replaced, then all of the extra actions that are contingent on that card draw are just not going to happen at all. So to apply that to this case specifically, because we replaced the card draw in the Sinbad's ability, then any of the other contingent effects, like revealing or discarding that card, are just not going to happen. So this means that Amy can tap Sinbad to draw two cards, and she doesn't even have to show anybody what either of them are, she gets to keep them both in her hand, even if they're both lands. Now that is an awesome value play. If you're wondering why this rule exists, or why it works this way, then try to think about what would happen if you had the Sinbad ability with a card like our friend Eruth again. It's not really clear how you would reveal a card if you didn't actually draw a card at all. So while it may make sense to have to reveal all of the cards that you drew in a case where the Sinbad draw got replaced with drawing a card or drawing multiple cards, it's not exactly clear how that would interact if you had something where the Sinbad draw got replaced with something that didn't involve you drawing cards at all, such as Eruth. And so that's the reason why this rule is worded this way, and the reason why you wouldn't have to reveal any of the cards, even if you actually did draw two of them with a thought reflection. And that's all I have for you today. How did you do? 
Join me again next time for another daily ruling, but until then, I hope you have a great day.